Today on Duality Gamecast, we infiltrate Plat Hat Games to look at Spectre Ops. Welcome to Duality Gamecast, game reviews by people who love to play games. In Spectre Ops, one player is an agent of ARC, infiltrating a Raxon Global Security Facility. The other players are hunters for Raxon, attempting to hunt down and kill the agent. The hunters are genetically altered soldiers with special powers who shoot on sight. Each of the agents have their own abilities and bring custom gear with them on their Spectre Op. The agent keeps track secretly on their movement sheet where they are on the board. If they begin their turn next to an objective, they flip it over to the arc side to show it's completed. On their turn, the agent may move up to four spaces and use their gear. If they cross the hunter's line of sight, they leave a mark on their board showing their last place where they were seen. The hunters may take their turns in any order. The beast uses its quadrupedal movement to move up to five spaces this turn instead of the typical four. This reveals the agent spider. However, the beast cannot shoot this turn because it used quadrupedal movement this turn. Next, the puppet uses its control relay ability to drive the car remotely with the gun along for the ride. Now, the gun hops out of the car and takes aim at the spider. To successfully shoot, the agent rolls one dice and gets a result equal to or higher than the range to the target. The gun's sharpshooting ability allows her to roll two dice when attacking. However, the spider's evasion ability reduces the hunter's attack roll by two when they are close to her. The gun rolls, and if it's a hit, the agent marks off one of their HP. Now, with all the hunters having acted, it's back to the agent's turn. All right, so we're taking a look at Spectre Ops from Plaid Hat Games. It's a game for two to five players, kind of a deductive game. William, tell me about gameplay. It's sneaky, that's what it is. Really, um, because it's a hidden movement game and there's that one agent running around the board, things fall apart quick if you ever get found. So it's all about early on in the game, trying to feign things, trick people, move in directions maybe they aren't expecting. Uh, it's just all about hidden movement, really. Uh, there's a couple things that we maybe didn't go over in the instruction video. There's a car that's in every game, not just the puppet gets the car. The, the car can do a, 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 what do they call it, motion sensor? And basically, instead of moving the car if you're in it or if you're the puppet, you can choose to do a motion sensor, and if the person who is the agent moved more than two spaces on their turn, they have to tell you which quadrant it compares to the car they're in. And what this does is it leads to situations where the agent isn't using their full movement to try to be tricky, or they want to stand just on the edge of something, hoping that this is going to be the round that you're going to do that to try to make, oh, they're over in this quadrant and they're just on the edge and they're going to run the other way. There's a lot of feigning and bluffing in this. And same thing with, with the, the special gear cards you get. As the agent, there's cards that let you move extra. There's cards that let you move without being seen for a turn, so you can cross the line of sight. So the cards throw out smoke bombs and that type of a thing. But the movement and the hidden ones, you don't actually have to employ, if that makes any sense. Like, you can... Um, you can use a movement card to make me think that you're running somewhere really far, but you slowly move two spaces that turn just to completely throw me off. Something along those lines. And it, it, it's all that type of stuff, which is really neat. And I've seen other hidden movement games, but they haven't been implemented this cleanly. This is a game, I think, it, what was the ages? It was 9 and up nine or something up. on it. A lot of those other games, um, was it Fury of Dracula, Lairs of Whitechapel, the game's a little bit fiddly on how you move. Um, and other ones, like, the, the people who are seeking, the people who are hiding, are moving on, like, different types of grids. So, like, one's moving from point to point, one's moving from corner to corner. Uh, in this one, everyone moves the same. You'll actually have the same amount of movement, unless you're using special cards. So, you, like, you you feel evenly paced. It's all about that sneakiness. Yeah, definitely. Um, we've played Lairs of Whitechapel mm -hmm. and Fury of Dracula. And yes. Both of them multiple times. And it, they're not for everybody. Uh, I'd say they're a lot drier than this game. Yes. I think this game could engage a lot of people who would probably take a pass on those games. Um, because you've got asymmetrical powers. Everybody gets something to do. Um, case in point, there's Whitechapel. If you're the police, you're just a different color pawn. Mm -hmm. You take turns kind of being the lead guy on a turn, but it doesn't really affect anything. This game, everybody has unique powers, everybody contributes in their own way. Um, there's combat, 
Yes. Which I guess there is in Fury of Dracula, right? Yeah. Convoluted, but, hard combat, but yeah, yes. Yeah, it doesn't feel the same as this at all. Um, this game also, the tracker, I really like. The movement tracker, you know, it's this tear-off pad of, of maps. It matches this. And while we're on the map, this is an ingenious map. I think they... I think we were talking at one point during the game, of, I wonder if they'll ever do other maps. Well, they don't really need to. No. I mean, this is... It's so easy to try those switchbacks, doublebacks, you know, hold your movement, sprint across to another quadrant. Um, they made this map really well. Yeah, I feel like any attempts to make other maps would just be making a lesser quality version of this map because yeah. this one's so good. Now, they complement that with the way they did in line of sight in this game. I mean, it's, what, basically orthogonal line yes. of sight. You can't see... In a lot of games, if you're using line of sight, you know, you've got like a kind of a cone or something. That doesn't work in this game. Everybody's wearing blinders. Yeah, I mean, they look, that agent could be literally right there diagonally from you, and you can't see him. But you do have the last scene markers, so you can kind of puzzle out their general area pretty easily. Um, on those lines, there's a lot of components that really, uh, really help the game along. Like you've got the last scene markers, you've got the objective tokens, you've got fantastic miniatures, which I'm skipping ahead to component quality. Shouldn't be doing that right now, but uh, it makes everything really clear on the map. Yeah, um, which I think helps a lot. Yeah, everything looks like what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, you aren't like, oh, what's that pond? Oh, that's the bad guy pond. I thought it was just another one of the other ponds. Yeah, everything, because of the miniatures in it, which most hidden movement games don't have because you're not seeing anybody on the board. Yeah. In this game, you know, there's hidden movement. The guy, you're, unless you're playing amazingly well, people are going to see your agent. You're going to be running on the board. There's times where you run around for multiple turns. You're being shot at. You're diving around corners. They're running around corners trying to find you. The, the miniatures matter, yeah. and they, they feel make it give it a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And also, the, the selection of agent and hunters... For once you get into replaying this game, kind of affects your strategy too. Because mm -hmm. uh, as soon as uh, they put down that last scene token and reveal what agent they have, now if you've played the game, you start thinking, "Oh, they can do this. We're gonna have to, you know, watch out for this, you know, that kind of thing." And it goes the same way. As soon as the agent player at the beginning of the game sees what hunters have been selected, they have to start planning appropriately for that. Right. Fury of Dracula, it's Dracula. <laughs> you know, True. in Letters of Whitechapel, it's Jack the Ripper. It's 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 just there's not. I don't feel that those games were built for playability the way this had it in mind. Right. So way more accessible, in my opinion. So let's jump ahead. Let's talk about component quality, which we already did. Yeah, we both kind of did. Yeah. Component quality is great. Again, miniatures, amazing. They they look exactly like their art on the cards. It's, you, I mean, they're not in the same exact poses, but they're very, very close. And you don't get any, there's no cross confusion. No. They made it so that all the agents look awesome, I feel. Maybe not as much the orangutan. He's probably the goofiest looking one. Because he uh, should be gorilla. Because he should be gorilla. Uh, they made all the hunters look really cool. They all have unique abilities. Uh, the art on the cards is great. The, I'm, I'm going to nitpick here. The only drawback is the car is just a chip thing, and the car on the board doesn't have a little piece. I'm trying to find stuff, but... Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a little circle token, because that's what all their tokens are, circles or squares. Because everything else looks so cool on this, to me it sticks out, just yeah. because it's like the lowest point of something that's really awesome. Just go buy an awesome Hot Wheels and replace it. There you go. Um, again, we are talking about the board layout. The board looks great. Mm -hmm. They did a good job. It, it has... Um, it, it's interesting that, like, all the... It basically, it's a big grid that's, you know, I don't know, 26, 24 by... Something. Something by 32. <laughs> um, and they, they printed the letters and numbers on it, so, you know, like, the vertical columns are letters, horizontally, they're all numbers, and they're all this unique gloss ink. Yeah, it's like a finish to them. So the numbers... Like, there's points where, like, the numbers are in shadows or they're not, and you think they blend in, but because the way it works... They're almost glowing on the board when you're playing. If you have any type of like side lighting, it, it's really really cool. It, it's something I haven't seen before as like just a component part of a board. Yeah. Um, otherwise, lots of little chits, dice, standard cheap dice. You don't really need to worry about these too much. But 
cards are, I guess, a little flimsier than maybe you think of role playing cards, but you're never shuffling. No. Um, you're never handling these in any hard way. The most you do is you turn them sideways when you activate them. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like with the great miniature sculpts that they gave you and the nice card art and the unique abilities, um, I hope they make an expansion for this game. I would love, I mean, you don't need a new board, like we said, but I would love to see more characters, yeah. more agents, more hunters, and more gear. Um, I think that would be awesome. I also already raved about it, but I love this tracker. I think it's way better than what I've seen in other games. It also is a tear-off pad with a sticky on the back. So you could actually stick these up on a wall to brag if you wanted to. So we've been having a lot of fun playing this, and it's interesting how it changes based on the number of players. Um, if you're playing with less players, more stuff is revealed for the hunters, so it's easier for them to try to track down and figure out where the agent's at. And vice versa, when you're playing with a lot of players, there's actually a like secret hidden uh, traitor in the game that lies basically for the agent, and that's kind of interesting. Overall, I'm gonna give this game a love it. I've been playing it all the time, but had lots of fun with it. Way back when, we used to play Fury of Dracula, hidden move, deducted in game, and it was okay. Uh, recently, more recently, we played some Letters of Whitechapel pretty regularly, and I think I liked it more than a lot of other people did, but still, it was a little long and a little boring sometimes, I have to admit. So I was really excited when I heard that this game was coming out because it just looked more action-packed but somehow still in the same vein. And sure enough, it is. Uh, with the asynchronous powers and the action movement combat, it's just much more stimulating while at the same time being one of those hidden movement kind of games. Really enjoyed it. You're going to have one of these in your collection, I think this is the one to get. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a must-buy. Blue Jay, Cobra, Orangutan, The Spider, what's your favorite agent? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks to all these people for helping us out. Don't forget to click on me to subscribe. Cool things to say. Whew. Okay, so how's the, how's the plan? Mm -hmm. There's an Orangutan.